Southern Utah is like adult nature Disneyland for me. It's where you'll discover some of America's best national parks and world-class road trips that connect them. The red rock, blue skies, and hidden canyons are a photographer's dream. But finding places that don't look like a busy Sunday swap meet to snap a few shots can be tough in spots like this. Unless you're willing to ditch the crowds, embrace a small sense of adventure, and turn off the highway and into a place like Cottonwood Canyon. This 60 mile route leads through an unpaved paradise of some of the best back road boondocking you'll find anywhere in the United States. It's a slow, steady journey through a geologic crumple zone in the Earth's crust, where you can burn through camera batteries faster than a kid with a new bag of Halloween candy in search of the perfect shot. It's also a place that the unexpected can and usually will happen. And for us, the unexpected came in the form of an 84-year-old vagabond named Bruce, adrift on the lonely landscapes of America, who emerged into our camp one night to share lessons from a lifetime of travel. There, there are so many unique places in this country that most people never see. This is the real country back here, not all those places within the states and all those people. I mean, they do have the power, but if you want to see what the country's all about when it started, this is it right here. We entered Cottonwood Canyon unsure of what the path had in store. We emerged on the other side with a few great shots and a whole new appreciation of Utah's back road beauty. When you travel, the world becomes a smaller place. When you explore with friends that share a love of photography, destinations come to life. We tell the stories of travel with our cameras, capturing some of the most beautiful locations on Earth. But every adventure reveals more than what's in the frame. The people, the food, and unexpected turns of the journey bring the full experience of travel into focus. Production funding for Outside Beyond the Lens provided by the Fresno Clovis Convention and Visitors Bureau. Nature, diversity, found in the heart of California's San Joaquin Valley. Fresno County, an outside year-round playground. By Gar Tatillion, crop care advice, products, and services. Farms feed families, public television feeds minds. By BK Lighting and Tekka Illumination, helping brighten the world with custom landscape and architectural lighting solutions. By integrated agribusiness professionals, members building healthy families and communities to feed your heart and soul. And by Valley Air Conditioning and Repair, family owned for 50 years, proud to support outside beyond the lens and the wonders of travel. And by viewers like you, In today's world, everyone is a photographer. From smartphones to pro gear, the quality gap in picture taking has narrowed dramatically and photo destinations like the art-inspired Seven Magic Mountains outside Las Vegas, Nevada, attract a wide range of photo-centric travelers eager to display their latest works on social media. Photography is the language of travel. It's how we share our experiences of exploration, the natural beauty in the world we discover, and how we remember the places that we may never visit again. Travel is something that calls to each of us on a cellular level. Regardless of the kind of adventure or how far you trek, humans are built to roam. And now, photography has become the common bond between people who come from different places but have that same drive to capture the moment. 
Well, we're out here just taking some photos. We uh, just got hitched the other day and uh, we came out here on a honeymoon and we got married while we're out here in Las Vegas. And we're just seeing the sights. We went and saw Hoover Dam earlier today. We came out here to the uh, Colored Rocks, um, just a couple of few miles outside of Las Vegas. And we just want to take some photos, take some little travel video, something to document our, our honeymoon, something to take back and show the family. For this trip, we mixed it up a little bit and brought a new shooter along for some fun. He's an old friend and someone that usually does sound for us on other television projects, Zach Allen. Out of seemingly nowhere, Zach decided one day to put down the microphone and buy a bunch of really good camera gear. He set out on his own and started taking pictures of landscapes. When John Neely couldn't join us for this adventure, I asked Zach to come along and he was quick to jump in the van. For our first day out, Zach, David Boomer, and myself drove from Fresno, California through Las Vegas and stayed the night in St. George, Utah, about a 10 hour drive. The next day, we hit the road again, making our way through Southern Utah in search of a place I've been wanting to explore with the van for a while now, a long and remote dirt road through Cottonwood Canyon. When you get into this part of Utah, just south of Zion National Park, it's easy to make way too many stops and shoot everything you see, because everything you see looks amazing. The Red Rock Buttes, mesas, and sprawling desert lure us out of the van about every 10 miles, so making our way through this part of the state is not easy. The first town we come to along this route is Kanab, Utah, at a junction that can take you north to Bryce Canyon National Park, south to the Grand Canyon, or east towards Lake Powell and Cottonwood Canyon Road. How you travel can really make a difference in the kind of trip you have. On a shoot like this, we like to build in extra time to not just enjoy the destination, but the journey itself. Many times, that's where the best stuff is found. And in the case of this excursion, the entire drive is why we're here. After an hour of driving east from Kanab, we finally see the turnoff for Cottonwood Road, a somewhat famous overland backcountry adventure route and where the real fun of this adventure begins. Right now we have a 48 mile dirt road that's gonna go north it's going to merge uh, with another road uh, quite a ways up there called Kodachrome Road. And then it's going to kick us out in Cannonville and Tropic, which are two little towns just below Bryce Canyon. So we've got uh, today, tonight, and then all day tomorrow and tomorrow night that we're going to camp out here, explore, and see what the, uh, see what the, the, the path has to offer. There's a really cool arch called Grospinor Arch. I looked up that on online, it looked pretty cool. We're gonna check that out. And there's a, another Narrows hike in here too we're gonna check out that should be pretty cool. Almost immediately, when our wheels leave the pavement, we feel a change in the journey. For the next two days, we'll drive through one of the most rugged and scenic canyons in Utah, totally off the grid. It's important to note that this drive shouldn't be confused with Big Cottonwood Canyon near Salt Lake City in the Wasatch Mountains. This Cottonwood Drive will take us through the heart of the Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument as the southern entrance to the drive passes through a dramatic scene carved by the Pariah River into rock and sandstone. The nearly 50 mile long dirt road is actually doable for hardier two wheel drive vehicles, but if there's any kind of rain, there are a few spots that even four wheeled equipped rigs like the battle van may have trouble with. We decide not to push too far up the road tonight since we really wanna pick our way north tomorrow to shoot, hike, and explore. 
So, just south of Hackberry Canyon and Trailhead, where several good campsites are found, and in our case, taken, we investigate a little dirt road to the east and find a great spot to park for the night, tucked into a side canyon well off the road. It doesn't take long to figure out that Cottonwood Canyon is a great place for some overland exploration. There are countless bird trails off the main road, each leading to another hidden part of the canyon to discover, each with its own surprises and unexpected beauty. And as we're about to learn, the beauty of Southern Utah isn't the only thing that can be unexpected here. As sudden as a desert windstorm can spring up on a calm night, an old man walked into our camp flanked by two tired dogs. He sat down on the side of my van and began to tell us his tales. His name is Bruce. I was going to say, why don't you sit down? Why don't okay, you sit down? I, I, we forgot our chairs. I, I, yeah. I got kind of a lousy bed. No, I, I have it too. Here, let me move the wine. They don't the, 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 well, don't so, move it too far. <laughs> Bruce and his dogs made themselves at home and without any real setup or introduction, he began to share the experiences of his life to total strangers. When I was, I came from a, I don't know what, but I was in an orphanage or a place called uh, the Catholic Working Boys Home, which has a nice ring to it. But and, uh, and I ran away from there when I was 15 and I joined the army and that was 1950. And so I went to Korea when I was 1950. And I, and I stayed in there until I was, till 1959. And then I got out and um, I had a, a really lucky break. I, I met an old guy, probably as old as me, that had uh, invented the first anesthesia machine. What? In this country. And, um, and he was starting then and working on the first heart-lung machine. How'd you meet him? I just, I was applying for a job and he was looking for a guy who could do something and I always had a mechanical ability. Anyway, he was working on a heart-lung machine and I started working on it with him and I was part of the team. And as it turned out, that was the first heart-lung machine ever that was built in this country and I... Where was this? This was in a place called... Uh, I think it was Rosendale, it's on Long Island. Sometimes life can throw you a curveball. In the case of Bruce, it's a Clayton Kershaw bender with two outs in the bottom of the ninth with bases loaded and a full count. We had this incredible sunset lining up and we were just about to fan out and shoot until dark when this desert wise man wandered into camp. But there was something about Bruce that we're all captivated by. This was a man with a story to tell. And we came to this place in time on this night to listen to it. New York became too much for me. I can't handle all those people. And so I took off for California and eventually I discovered the mountains and then I started working ski resorts and the park service and that kind of thing. And and that's pretty much what I've done. That's my life. And that's, you know, when 65 came by, it didn't make a damn bit of difference. It just kept going by. I don't have a favorite place. I, I, I have lots of favorite places. I mean, there, there are so many unique places in this country that most people never see. I spend most of my time on roads. It isn't so much that I want to see Escalante as much as I like to drive the back roads because at my point, I want to see what the country really is. And this is what the, this is the real country back here. Not all those places within the states and all those people. I mean, they do have the power, but if you want to see what the country's all about, when it started, 
this is it right here. And with that last observation, we were now season ticket holding Bruce fans. He was speaking to the choir, but in a way we've never so perfectly put it. The places where the masses go are overrun for a reason. It's been designated as the place to go. So we go there. But back here and anywhere off the beaten path in the world is where you'll usually find that deeper level of truth in travel. A truth Bruce has lived for most of his life. You need to get off the damned highway to see what it's all about. I mean, you, you must know if you if you do backcountry photography, there are sites that are just, forget the national parks. I mean, there are sites back here that, that are unbelievable. I, you know, they, it, it always surprises me that I'll be driving along on a back road sometime, and all of a sudden I come into this view that like will beat any damn national park you ever saw. You know, I'll tell you what, when I was a young guy, yeah, I think the, the population of this country is 140 billion or million. I don't know which. But it's, it's almost three times that now. That's right. You know? 330 million now. Yeah, it's just yeah. too many people. It's just, it's are you guys married or kids and all that? Yeah, I am. How I'm not. Escape? I'm a bachelor. <laughs> well, we're working. Yeah. Oh, oh, somebody pays you to do this? <laughs> Jesus, you know? I, I, I've had bad luck all my life. <laughs> I think you're having pretty good luck right now. Well, yeah. Actually, I have. Yeah. When you think about it, you know, yeah. I often think about that, you know? I mean, I had a lousy beginning. Bruce stayed with us for about 30 minutes. He passed on a glass of wine, and as fast and mysteriously as he appeared, he was gone. We finished off the night with a classic Utah sunset, still amazed at the fortunes of this adventure already realized. Bruce is someone we'll never forget. Bruce invited us to visit his camp nearby the next morning, which we did on our way out. He gave us a little tour of his custom suburban and a peek inside his lonely yet content world. He shared a few old pics with us and a little bit more knowledge before saying goodbye. As we left, he went back to reading his book in the hot Utah sun, a biography on Douglas MacArthur that he picked up at a secondhand store. With an intensely hot sun overhead and no rain in the forecast, we slowly begin our photo safari north on Cottonwood Canyon Road. Um, the landscape here is extreme. Two completely different land masses colliding into each other. On one side, the traditional red and white Navajo sandstone Southern Utah is known for. The other side, sedimentary layers are forced upward into a sharp upheaval of dirt and stone, forming a distinctive line of small peaks the entire length of the canyon, making for a dramatic backdrop to film and explore. Cottonwood Canyon Road is pretty cool. We're having a good time. Today, you know, is our full day on the road exploring driving slowly, examining things, exploring things. We spent two days, basically a day and a half, just getting here from California, kind of hammered down, really rocking it to get here. Now that we're here, we have beautiful sunny skies, probably 75 degrees, maybe a little warmer. It's a little warmer. And uh, we spotted a big cave from the road, from the main road uh, to the west of us. So we decided, uh, let's go take a look. So we're gonna hike into the cave right now. And this is what's great about Cottonwood Canyon Road, is you can stop anywhere you want to, pull over. There's lots of little spur roads. Plenty of space to pull over. Plenty of space to pull over. Get out and explore. Taking quick strike hikes like this always adds a new dimension to a road trip. When you're in road trip mode, it's easy to keep yourself penned in the car watching the world roll on by. But taking short breaks, getting out of the car, and exploring little features like this cave we found give you that textural experience of what a place is really like up close. Further up canyon, 
the road begins to narrow and climb some pretty steep sections as it weaves through the terrain. About halfway up Cottonwood Canyon Drive, one of the standout hikes of this route is found, the Cottonwood Narrows. The trailhead for this hike is just off the road and leads into a deep slot canyon to the west that can be explored in dry conditions. You need to be aware of the weather where you are and upstream of the dry creek bed you're walking in. A downpour 20 miles away upstream, even if skies are clear down here, can result in a flash flood that could roar down this drainage. It actually, the further up you go, the less interesting it gets. The more the canyon walls separate from each other and it gets less dynamic. Down here at the bottom of the narrow south hike is where it's really cool. The canyon walls are tight, they're vertical, and kind of feel like they're closing in on you. It really gives you that true essence of what a slot canyon hike is supposed to feel like. By late afternoon, we've begun to climb out of Cottonwood Canyon onto a high desert plateau. We're starting to think about where we might camp for the night, but we have one more place to hit on our list. Utah is well known for its stunning sandstone shapes, canyons, and arches. And here, on the north end of the drive, Grospener Arch comes into view, and it is a dandy. Named after the first time president and editor of National Geographic magazine, Gilbert Hovey Grospener. This is actually a double arch that stretches 150 feet above the desert floor. The yellow and pink hues of its sandstone really set this arch apart from others we've seen and photographed in Utah. And its paved path from the parking area makes it incredibly easy to reach and admire. The outdoor treasures of southern Utah are many, and as Cottonwood Canyon comes to an end, the road leads into another well-known state park just ahead, Kodachrome Basin. This 2,300-acre park is just something you have to see in person to truly appreciate. Of all the places I've shot in Utah, and I've been to quite a few, this one basin is perhaps my favorite. By nightfall, we found a little spot off the road to call home for the night. Camp is always a special time, no matter where you are or who you're with. It connects us to a primal marker we all share, an awareness that, no matter how complex our lives might be, the simple act of sharing a fire, cooking together, and reflecting on a good day outside feels right deep down inside. It's the very thing that keeps a guy like Bruce going strong. A man who, by his own choice, lives the life of a drifter. A person with a deep love affair for wild places away from the crowds. Don't feel sorry for him. In many ways, he's richer than most of us ever will be. And hopefully, what he's learned and passed down through our chance meeting together on a remote canyon in southern Utah will spark something in someone watching this to look a little closer at what his words truly mean. One of the things I, I like about my life is that my dogs are free, and I'm free. I'm really free. You know, if you think about it for a minute, there's very time, very little time in your life that you're not either responsible to or for someone or something, I'm free. I can do what I want, when I want, as long as it's legal and I can afford it. Can you say that?
Production funding for Outside Beyond the Lens provided by the Fresno Clovis Convention and Visitors Bureau. Nature, diversity, found in the heart of California's San Joaquin Valley, Fresno County, an outside year-round playground. By Gar Tatillion, crop care advice, products, and services. Farms feed families, public television feeds minds. By BK Lighting and Tekka Illumination, helping brighten the world with custom landscape and architectural lighting solutions. By integrated agribusiness professionals, members building healthy families and communities to feed your heart and soul. And by Valley Air Conditioning and Repair, family owned for 50 years, proud to support outside beyond the lens and the wonders of travel. And by viewers like you, 